Hello, welcome back to The Gully Dinosaur. My name is Isabella. I'm a 21 year old student studying design and secondary education and this is the Floaty Fiber podcast. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land in which I am filming on today, the Bidjigal people of the Eora Nation. I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging as well as extend my respect to any Indigenous or First Nations peoples crafting, listening, watching with us today. This land was stolen and unceded, always was and always will be Aboriginal land. So I hope you have a drink for hydration. I've got some water in my water bottle and I hope you have a drink of choice. Today I've got this lovely mug that I bought from the Big Design Market um, last weekend. Um, in Barangaroo uh, and this one is a Bridget Boardman um, ceramics mug and I'll have her link in the description um, I'm pretty sure she's based out of Victoria anyway this is a beautiful um, throne mug with like a handmade handle with some gold luster um, yeah beautiful I'll pop that over there. Awesome. Before we start talking about what I'm wearing, I would love to thank everybody who left a lovely comment on my last podcast and anyone who went over and followed me on Instagram. Um, It's been lovely connecting with you guys. And thank you to anyone who gave my last video a like or enjoyed the content enough to subscribe. Um, I obviously, I didn't think that anyone would really watch it for one and then anyone to really leave like a nice comment saying they liked my content or that um, they couldn't wait to see more from me which was really nice Um, yeah I didn't expect anyone to watch it really so um, welcome back um, and thank you Um, yeah it was amazing to kind of see all these people and the beautiful knitting community. I love being a part of it and then to kind of have other people love to watch my stuff um, was really unexpected and really nice and has given me the push to keep going I guess which is great and I'm really appreciative and really thankful Um, yeah and just makes me really glad that I decided to bite the bullet and um, share my stuff with you guys. So it's been two weeks since my last podcast, which again, I'm very thankful for anyone who's gone and watched that and I will leave a a card or something um, if I can work out how to do that to watch it if you haven't already and you like my content. That would be great if you want to go back and watch that. Um, Today is Friday the 16th of September. For anyone who doesn't... Any events on your calendar? Thank you, Siri. Um, For anyone who um, is like in the art world or kind of um, Australian artists or I guess she lives in um, New York now, um, you guys would know CJ Hendry. Um, She was doing her copyright infringement drop this morning and I went out to see if I could get one um, but the two ones that were like closest to my house I missed out on unfortunately and then I waited around for a couple of other ones and then I decided to come back home and film this for you guys Um, and it's a beautiful day here in um, Sydney Um, I'm going to the beach after this so that's why I'm wearing um, my teardrop crop um, because it is much too hot to wear any other knits today I think it's really important to um, talk about Um, measurements and stuff when I'm showing you garments that are on my body Um, I find it really useful when other people put their measurements in their videos for like the clothes that they're knitting, crocheting, um, sewing even and then what size they chose because it's all good and well for me to say hey I'm knitting a for example my petite knit one I'm knitting a extra large and for my souffle tee I'm knitting a size 4 Um, But what does that really mean in relation to how it fits on my body and how it looks? So I have a 102 centimeter to 105 centimeter bust, which is a 39 and a half inch to a 40 and a half inch bust. Um, My waist is um, anywhere between 
28 and 30, 31, um, obviously fluctuating, um, depending on like if I've eaten anything and I'm bloated or the time of the month, anything like that. Um, and then my hip measurement, ooh, I might have to double check that, but I will put it, I'll put it here. I'm 177 centimeters tall, um, so between 5'9 and 5'10, I'm not really sure. Um, I'm more, yeah, I'm tall. Um, my shoe size is um, a 39 to 40 European size or a size 9 um, Australian. Uh, and I'll put whatever US size that is here. Um, yeah, and I normally, I normally buy, it's interesting because I fluctuate anywhere between a size 8 and a size 12. Um, if, like, depending on the size of the garment or the fit of the garment, if it's something that is elastic and hugs your waist and then is, like, flowy, I'll generally go for a smaller size because I like it tight around my waist. Um... But something like jeans, which you have to factor in bum and um, upper thigh um, measurements as well, um, could go either way, depending on the manufacturer. Yes, but I do have quite broad shoulders, so like if I'm buying an, an oversized blazer, I will definitely go for the 12, even if the size is already oversized. The 10, I just feel like, just is really too short for my shoulders. Yeah, and that's 10 Australian, so I think that's 6 six in the US. Yeah, and then the size, uh, an Australian 12 is a US 8, which I don't know what the European size, but I'll obviously put them here as well. Yeah, so that's kind of my body measurements, and that's how you can see if anything's on my bust. It'll generally be tighter than my waist or my hips, and why I tend to lengthen projects because I've got quite long noodly arms um yeah and for when I knit anything I haven't knit anything yet for the bottoms but when I do I will be lengthening I'm pretty sure unless they're like short shorts but also uh, then again like if you can see my bum I'm probably gonna lengthen them yeah so those are my measurements and I hope that's helpful for you in terms of how things fit on my body Start off with, what I'm wearing is also a finished object. So I've got the Teardrop Crop by Joan Ho. And in this beautiful Rosabella Bellissima um, blush pink yarn. And then I have this deep coral um, little contrast made out of... Um, Wagtail Yarns, Seven Ply, Fine Kid Mohair, which is beautiful. Yeah, dark in dark coral. And then I also have, I have heaps left over, which I didn't think I would. Um, which is why I originally did the contrast colour. So I don't know whether I'm going to go back and undo the last bit that... Um, I did, but we'll get into that later. This is the Rosabella Bellissima, um, 8-ply DK Light Worsted Yarn in the colour Blush 06. And it is 72% Kid Mohair, 24% Fine Merino, and 4% Cotton. So that's the main colour. Um, this pattern is largely... Well, it has a broad range of sizes, very customizable, very size inclusive, and the chart is all on her Ravelry um, page for the pattern, um, and you can kind of go through grids based on your um, overall bust circumference, and then your um, the length of the top that you want. Excuse me. Yeah, the length of the top that you want. Um, and then they has suggestions in the pattern on um, how wide you should make it or what adjustments you should make 
so that the top is tight and because over time it will um, it will loosen up obviously as a knitted garment um, yeah so I didn't get gauge um, I did like three or four gauge swatches and I was gonna do a video about me making it and post it last week but it didn't end up happening um, and so basically what I talked about was um, adjustments I made which will all be in my Ravelry project page for for this um, I think I went down a couple of length sizes because I couldn't get gauge um, and I was only two or three stitches off but I knit this on a three millimeter needle and the recommended was four and then I did the bits that needed the smaller needle on a 2.5 so I was doing some fairy knitting um, which I like to say when I'm doing socks with my mini um, my shorties um, because you're like very dainty with it um, yeah so I did that and I knit to where I was going to stop the top and it ended up like wrapping completely around my bust which was very strange um, so I decided to rip back a little bit so that I had um, some negative ease on the top um, even if I tied it up um, yeah and then so back into the color choice with the contrast and stuff um, I really liked this but having like a a fair not fair but fairer skin tone um, yeah the orange with the blush pink kind of looks like nipples um, and so when I had it in the photo like the photo does on her Ravelry with all the beautiful testers and they've got it like tied up around their neck it just looked wrong um, so I don't know whether I like I was saying before I don't know whether um, I'm going to Kitchener a new section with the main color yarn onto the top and then rip out the bottom because it's knit this way around the body um, or like a like a scarf um, knit flat sorry if I didn't mention that already um, yeah and then undo the last little bit and redo it with the main color and then knit a main color I cord yeah this is like a hundred and something centimeter I cord which actually surprising this one is a three stitch I cord but each size has a different um, I cord thickness and obviously if you want to do smaller do smaller if not um, let me grab uh, my Ravelry yeah this comes with 11 sizes for the top and then goes up to a so the largest size is a 14 inch or 35.5 centimeter height of the top and then the largest size is 61.5 inch bust or 156.2 centimeters however this will fit people that are a little bit larger than that as well because of the negative ease that's recommended um, in the pattern for that and then it gives like the yardages and the meterages which I think is great for um, each different size so you can have like the largest height of the top with the smallest bust and then and so on and so forth and there's like a grid um, which is amazing um, a couple of other things yes it's knit flat um, on here I can't see a difficulty rating on here but I would say this is good for advanced beginners um, 
just the lace pattern um, that you would need kind of help with but that's a without giving too much away a mixture of decreases and yarn overs um, which was very intuitive um, the repeat yeah so back to what I was saying with the top um, yeah there's a double folded little bit that creates the casing for the eye cord which is great um, the pattern is very well written very clear um, like I said um, yeah I just don't know whether I'm gonna go back and make it all one color like I was going to I only had 100 grams which it's 90 ish meters per 50 grams so it was giving me like 180 meters and the size I was going to knit even with my gauge being off needed way more than that um, and that's why I decided to use the contrast color so um, we'll see how that goes um, okay and now my second finished object is one that you saw last episode and it was a whip all the knitting's done but this is my souffle tee so all the knitting is done I ended up doing the long sleeves with the double folded over here all the eye cords finished except I excuse me everything is finished except I haven't trimmed my little my little threads yet um, I blocked it, um, yeah, I wet blocked it, um, the yarn that I used was the thrifted Wangaratta Woolen Mills thread or lace weight coned knitting yarn and it didn't have a colour or anything and then I used the Wagtail yarns, um, this one here, 100% Kid Mohair, um, in the colour Pale Pink. I only use like 110 grams of the this mohair um, so I used one skein and then like a little bit of this which I kind of wish I knew that I wasn't going to use that much I would have maybe like shortened the sleeves or I would have yeah not wound up the whole thing like I would have taken 10 or 20 grams off the main skein and then rewound it and then just used what I needed and then reskained it because now I've got it all in a box in um, cakes up here and I'm not too sure how that's gonna go um, sorry if I'm adjusting this I don't want to flash you guys um, but yeah so the only thing that needs to happen for this is I just need a button um, for the keyhole back um, I haven't found one I liked and then the ones that I did find that I liked I only need one and then the shipping is $10 like I'm paying 30, 30 cents to $3 for one button and then $10 shipping. I can't really justify that. I am a student. <laughs> um, and also the economics of it. Like I don't want things going on plane. So I'm preferably trying to buy a button from somewhere in Sydney. Um, but I haven't been able to go to Spotlight or to um, a specialty button store um to get one just yet things to note that i haven't said about this already accidentally on the sleeves did two different um length cuffs when it's on you can't really notice i showed my mum and she didn't notice until i pointed it out and i feel like unless you're in the you're not gonna know when it's on like people aren't gonna go oh my god your cuff lengths are two different sizes like what are you doing um which is great um, and I'm kind of like not too lazy to undo it but like too lazy to undo it so um, for now we're gonna leave that it's beautiful it's very soft um, the gauge is still a little bit looser than everyone else's on Ravelry because this isn't like a traditional mohair silk blend or two strands of a mohair silk blend actually because one is 100% wool and has no halo and then excuse me fluff in my mouth um, and then the 100% um, um, kid mohair has a halo but it doesn't have silk in it so it doesn't have that extra fluff 
factor. Same with this. Um, but amazing yarn. I loved not having to join any ends for the entire length of the project except for the 10 grams of the mohair. I think I was halfway through the sleeve on the second sleeve when I had to do the next bit of mohair. So yeah, really keen to wear this. Um, maybe with a skirt or something. Um, and really pleased and impressed with myself. Um, this was my first circular, circular yoke construction. Um, I mean, shout out to Laura from Penrose Knits. Um, she writes amazing patterns, very size inclusive. And those are things that I want to promote on this channel and this space that we're inclusive of everybody and tolerant um, and I think with my spring plans I didn't really do too much research into the patterns that I was um, advertising and it wasn't until someone said you know podcasts are like knitting advertisements you're advertising patterns you're advertising yarn products um, your needles things like that um, advertising other channels and um, I think it wasn't until I heard that that it was a really conscious thought of mine that I want to be inclusive and promote people that are making the effort and making the change to have things accessible to all bodies or at least a a good sample of bodies and have patterns that are well written that if you are outside of those that broad range that you're able to modify um, and some of those patterns weren't as size inclusive as they could be. We've seen, um, what's the word, um, up and coming designers um, start doing really well on the size inclusivity front including Penrose Knits and Rebecca from the Cray Bayer um, and a whole bunch of other people just started out designing and they're able to provide the size range for the appropriate um, percentage of the population. And so from now on, I kind of want to only, only knit those patterns that are accessible to you guys. Um, I know that I've definitely been knitfluenced or influenced my knitting through other people's podcasts, pa patterns they make. I've gone, oh wow, that's really pretty. I want to make it and I want everybody to be able to take that away from my channel and not go, oh no, I can't knit that because it's not size inclusive and I've just promoted that. So yeah, there's my little, not rant, but I guess I'm aiming to be more conscious about that with you guys and yeah, be really conscious of what brands and designers that I'm supporting and how they're positively impacting the knitting community. So, yeah, if I didn't mention before, for this I knit it using the recommended needle size. I've got the nice long sleeves, um, and I did some sleeve modifications, which will be in my Ravelry project page. Um, yeah, so I think this looks really cute. Um, and yeah, love the pattern. I'm going to knit it again in a short sleeve. Um, yeah. And here's the gorgeous ruffle. Awesome. So continuing with the ruffle theme, we're going to move on to a new whip. Um, one I spoke about in my last video in my September plans action. Um, and we have the Ruffle Socks by Petite Knit. Um, I've got a 39 European size, 9 Australian, and I think, I don't know if the Australian and the US sizes are the same, but a 3940 um, European size foot. Um, I normally knit vanilla socks on a 2.25 millimeter needle and I normally do a 60 stitch sock and so to get the final 
measurement to be like good with my gauge. I knit the size below mine um, and I used the 2.25 the 2.5 needle as specified. So so far we've got the um, the cuff and the ruffle and I have a few rows to go before I get to um, the heel and I'm going to use the fish lips kiss heel um, pattern which will also be in the description below instead of the short row pattern that Petite Knit has put in the pattern so that specifies a short row heel um, in there which is super easy to follow but I just prefer the fit of the fish lips kiss or a um, slip stitch heel flap and gusset I like that one as well um, yeah, I have a bit of a skinny heel, so I like it to be really nice and tight and feel secure and not like it's bunching in my shoe. I do like to wear these with shoes. Um, I wore, excuse the lighting, I'm using natural lighting today. Um, and so if this changes, I'm hoping that the auto setting on my camera fixes anything. Um, but I wore a pair of vanilla ones in my Doc Martens the other day. Um, and they are great really nice and cozy and you keep your toes nice and nice I would say nice and warm but also like it doesn't feel like too hot and I'm someone who gets really 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 hot feet and I always have since I was a kid so I find these really really nice and breathable as well as insulating which obviously they're very common qualities of wool this is a 75-25 um, yarn. This is the Sophie's Garden. Hopefully you can see that. If not, I will insert a thing. Um, this is three cats yarn. Um, four ply fingering weight, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Um, soft sock in the colour Sophie's Garden. Um, yeah, amazing, lovely. I'm just using a. I had 50 grams left over after I used this to make the nurture bralette, and after I used, I think, three or four grams in my last finished object, the Paul Klee sweater. Um, so, really trying to use up this yarn using what I have um, to make these and I also think it's a very cute colour like lovely little cream spring sock with a little bit of um, speckles the speckles are nice and even um, and you have little bits of purple yellow red pink yeah it's just gorgeous gorgeous yarn feels very soft um, so hopefully I'll have these finished by our next podcast um, yeah, which I hope will either be in will either be up next week or in two weeks time. Um, Cause last week I definitely felt like I could have made a video, um, which is why I tried to do the video for this top. Um, but I think I could do podcasts once a week, um, but no guarantees on that. So we'll see whether it's next week or two weeks time. But hopefully these are finished. Um, and this is in the cutest little project bag um, by Mavis Handmade. Um, and it's got these gorgeous little kitties um, holding like fruit and flowers and stuff. And it's in the small size, which is perfect, if not too big, for socks, which is amazing. You could probably put two lots of socks. I had the socks and this crop top in there at the same time. And there was enough room for everything. Nothing was creased. It has these gorgeous little pockets and it's got a D-ring on the inside um, to hold all your stitch markers and little doodads um, and lots of pockets on the insides to hold like your needles and stuff. I've got my, my swatch for this. I know I said I don't swatch for socks and I still don't and I won't. Um, this was a swatch for my Nutch Bralette. But I used 2.5mm needles for that too so this was Perfect. Save your swatches unless you're unraveling them to use your yarn for your project. Because um, you might need them. 
Um, yeah, so that is my Ruffle Socks by Petite Knit. And moving on to more Petite Knit, totally unintentional. We have my Ingrid sweater. Which has had a little bit of progress since last episode. And would have had way more. Um, but we'll get into the issues with that later. So, last podcast, I kind of had... Hmm, I can't remember whether I had started the mock cable section. Or if I was only just a little bit into it. But I have since done, completed the mock cable section. And I'm on to the 2x2 two two ribbing. Um, I've done the eyelet section before that as well. Um, so there's this. And then there is, I think, the one by one and then the double knitting for the bind off or it's just a bind off without the double knitting. So whatever section is next, I only have two sections to go. However, like I was saying um, last podcast, I was waiting for more yarn to come in because I only bought five skeins originally and for my size, which I completely forgot to mention. I am knitting the size extra large. I have an 102 to 105 centimeter bust, so a 39 and a half to a 40 and a half inch bust, um, which obviously fluctuates. Yeah, and I'm using the Malabrigo. I'm not using Malabrigo Rios, which is what I said in my last episode. I'm actually using Malabrigo Worsted, which is the single ply version, not the plied version. Which, foreshadowing, is why I haven't made much progress. So I have this much left and my scale's broken. So I don't know how much this is. And then I have a full 100 and something gram cake left. But I still have to knit two long sleeves and the rest of the body. And so I'm using recommended needle size 4 millimeters. And so far I've done everything to pattern, or as the pattern specifies for my size. And I just thought I would stop here for two reasons. One, for when my new yarn comes I can alternate skeins for the last little bottom section with my remaining partial skein. As well as, so I've got two skeins coming in the mail, because I don't know if a hundred grams is going to be enough per per armhole so what I was going to do is split my 100 and something into into two um so 250 gram or 250 point whatever and alternate like two rows of the new one row of the old or the other way around one row of the old two rows of the new and so on and so forth until I get to the end of the sleeve and then see how much I have left and then do the other sleeve and then obviously at the end finish the body. And I keep going to put this up here but I'll just talk about it. Yeah, so I'd rather the arms be long and I crop the length than have the full length of the body and not be able to finish the sleeves. Believe it or not, the Malabrigo Worsted is so hard to find. I have, I've done a order from... Hmm. I actually don't know, but it's a UK site, um, which I will put here because I can't freaking remember and I didn't write notes, um, which I probably should have because this is sounding a bit scat. So if you are still with me, thank you very much for still watching. Yeah, it's a bit of a rambly one today, but, um, what was I saying? Yes, so I was saying that I would rather have the full length sleeves than a, a full length body and having shorter sleeves. Um, obviously it's a pullover, you want the sleeves to be long, unless you want them to be short. I don't know what your preference is. Mine for this sweater in particular, because it is a worsted weight yarn, I would like it to be long sleeves. Um, yeah, and I don't mind cropping it. The adjustment in the pattern, if you want to crop it, is to crop it in the section that I'm in now. So that's why I decided to stop 
and this is also a ribbing section so it's going to take up more yarn than a well there is no there is no regular section that's what I was going to say but um like for example the mock cable section took up hardly any yarn in comparison to the moss stitch section so yeah that's where I'm at I'm waiting for that to come in um, and other things that might happen with this pattern is this is my first time doing double knitting and it was an epic fail it looks like sorry my camera just cut out if I decide to keep the um, the pattern or the neck as pattern um, and not do it in a fold over hem which I mentioned last time I will go back and redo the double knitting on the on the collar on the neckband sorry yeah so I'm waiting for that to come in so this has been on hold for pretty much the duration of the two weeks um, I knit the rest of this in less than a day which is a great segue into the next segment of acquisitions um, which I know I said I don't normally buy too much yarn and then I say that and then I go oh my god there's so many yarns I want to buy anyway sidetracked um, yeah, start, finish this the day after the podcast and then, um, this acquisition came in the mail and I was very disappointed because in Australia it is now spring. Um, our season start on the first of the months that correspond with the seasons um, so September 1st, my last podcast was the first day of spring. It's starting to get warmer here, although they have just announced that it will be the a consecutive La Nina weather event in Australia for summer. So it's going to mean that that's going to be a very wet, non-summery summer, which I am not excited for. Summer, spring and summer are my favourite seasons. Um, one, because my birthday's at the end of spring. But, um, in November, but secondly, because I love going to the beach, um, I love enjoying the sun, um, yeah, all things spring and summer, outdoorsy, but like moder moderately outdoorsy, mostly indoors, but like love the beach, yeah. So, wanted to get this done before it kind of got cold. But also, with the news about the La Nina, it's going to be cold anyway. So there's no real rush to finish this, even though I just want to wear it. And yeah, just waiting, waiting for it to be finished. Waiting for my yarn to come in. Um, and yes, again, same project bag for this one. This is the cats with mushrooms and flowers and strawberries and apples. Um, also by... Mavis Handmade, I showed it to you in the last podcast, which don't mind the fur on the bottom. I have cats and was working with mohair in this bag before for my souffle. And yeah, she got a little bit dirty. This fits excellently in here and I love a good like floor bag. Like if I could have like a knitting basket to have all of my stuff in, that would be amazing yeah oh before I get into acquisitions um this actually this is a a UFO that if I show it to you I'm gonna be more motivated to um, to make some progress on it for the next time that we sit down and chat so I'm giving you content and you're giving me the motivation to finish a project that I've been wanting to finish but have been getting distracted with other cast on. So this um, is a cute little mitered squared blanket and originally this went on hold so I was making steady progress on this a little backstory. Um, making steady progress on this and then two things happened so I started this project because I had spare of this cream cream color 
I wanted a way to use it up but I for this pattern I had to buy more of it because it was the main colour which could have just picked a different colour to be the main colour and not had to buy any more but silly me I wasn't that smart to think about it like that um, and once I saw the pattern and that was the main colour I got it in my head that that was the main colour and I had to buy more um, so what ended up happening was I got two different dye lots which is what happens when you don't buy yarn in close succession um, which you can't really see that much in this lighting but in bright outside light you can definitely see it and they're two cream squares put next to each other which is amazing not my favorite thing in the world anyway it has one two three four colors so I've got a dusty lavender an apricot color a what is this color here this weirdly enough this sagey green is called linen random but go off and this is a dusty blue um, Actually, this isn't lavender. This is called purple ash. Anyway, the yarn is... I've got... Where did the other ball go? Anyway, this is the yarn. It is... Four Seasons Pure Wool 8 Ply 100% Australian Wool in 50 gram balls. And these... I got these from Spotlight. So they're made... This was before I discovered like artesian and dyed any sort of like specialty yarn stuff um yeah anyway bought these I bought these on special I don't know how much they normally are but I got them on 50% off and I bought a whole bunch all at the same time which was great um because I knew that's what I wanted anyway I'll show you sorry this has all my scribbles on it and I couldn't find the digital version um, but this is the Yarnspirations Bernat Just Keep Knitting Mitered, Square, Mitered Squares Knit Blanket. And I'm pretty sure this is a free pattern, um, which I'll correct myself if I'm wrong. But this is... I don't know why I modded it. Um, I think I was using the wrong yarn, which I was trying to use up my stash and ended up buying more yarn. Um, not as smart as I think I am. Um, but anyway, this is like the pattern, um, the colour block sections. I'm currently on the middle row. Yeah. Sorry, I was actually talking about why this was, um, hibernated or on hold. And that's because our new puppy who's about to turn one, um, was eating some sort of meaty treat on my bed. And this was folded up neatly on my bed and it got like the treat juice on a cream section not like any other section where you wouldn't see it a cream section so oh yeah you can kind of I don't know if you can see that there's kind of still a little bit of reg residue but I like sponged it because what I, w I didn't want to do is wash this I don't know if this is super wash or not because it doesn't say I'm going to assume it is but also if I process that it isn't and treat it like that, it's going to stay good for a really long time. Yeah, so this was on hold because of that and I, it smelled and I didn't really want to deal with that. So I was like, no, I'm packing this up. And also, secondly, also related to the dog. Oh yeah, so I'm up to this section here and you'll all be very proud of me. I am weaving in my ends as I go, except for these ones because... The colours that go above them will correspond and I can weave them up that way as well. Um, yeah, the dog got into my yarn. That's why I had to cake up this because it was a ball and it was just like tattered everywhere. Um, all over the house, came home um, and I just wasn't, I wasn't dealing with it. So yeah, we put her on hold. But now I've shown her to you guys. Uh, I'm going to try and make some progress and get across another couple of rows. This, I'm using a 4mm needle and it's just, for anyone who's knit a, like a mitered squared blanket before, kind of like a crochet granny square blanket, you can kind of just pick up and 
do each square as you go along so I'll pick up down here and here and then work and then do the increase along the center edge so the first half is a bit of a slog and then the second half goes really quick and I can normally do it in a couple of episodes of a shorter show or something like that um, yeah four millimeter needles I'm gonna say this is a DK um, like spotlight doesn't label its yarns like that in Australia it's more like even though it might be a one ply yarn which really gets my gripe um, for someone who studied like textiles and stuff like that um, to call it a four ply even though the actual yarn has one or two plies but four ply indicating the weight um, similar to this maybe I can undo it Yeah, this has only four four strands, so four plies, but they're calling it an eight ply. Um, what are the yardages, actually? This is 80 meters per 50 gram ball, so that's the weight of that. Um, yeah, so beautiful decoration. Um, it'll go nicely on my bed when it's finished or as a couch blanket. Um, obviously being 100% wool it's very nice and warm um, that's not wanting to stay there so we'll just pop it out of the way and now I'm moving on to acquisitions this is one of the skeins of the Malabrigo Rios worsted weight yarn in the color pearl 10 as you can see these colors are extremely different and that's not even the dye lot it is the the way the yarn is constructed so there's one that's the one that I'm using for my project is single ply and this one has how many? One, two, three. This one has four plies and so there's a little bit more of that um, yellowy, patchy looking um, colour in that. And you know what, if this was just the colour I probably would have just gone ahead and strapped it into my um, Ingrid sweater um, but the the construction of the yarn is completely different and it would be too different for me to use this it would give the overall garment um, a completely different look and just for the sleeves um, I wouldn't be happy with that and especially for um, the money I paid for these um, they're $24 each plus shipping so it was a little over $50 um, for yarn that's not right um, I can't send it back um, tried to sell it on Facebook marketplace and nobody wants it so um, yeah just not happy in terms of it's not the yarn I wanted but that's that's completely on me I thought I even convinced myself that that yarn was the Rios yarn because I didn't know that there was two types of worsted for Malabrigo um but yeah so I'll be hanging on to these for now um I it's kind of a unique color and I'm not really a dark purple fan like I, I like more of the light and airy um, pastel colors yeah so I don't know also it's 200 grams so it's a little under 400 meters um, what you can make with that um, I haven't seen lots on um, lots on Ravelry and I've used all of the the filters and stuff to try and find something that I would be happy to use for that but I don't think I need two projects or two pieces in my wardrobe of that colour um, and the amount of yarn I have would only be for like a t-shirt or something and this doesn't scream like summery outdoorsy weather or even autumn like thinking about wearing it in the other transitional phase um, yeah so not happy with that have two more skeins coming in the mail and hopefully they're gonna be perfect I made sure that they were the um, worsted 
I was going to buy three just in case so I didn't have to shorten the body but this website which I'll have here again um, only had two in stock and they were the last two that I could find that ships to Australia so this is like my only bit of yarn that I'll be able to use and yeah so not happy with this yarn more yarn coming in the mail I don't know when it's gonna come um, but in the meantime I have my socks to work on um, which I think that I'm going to get done relatively quickly considering their socks and I love the excuse me I have the hiccups um, I've got my socks to work on I've got my blanket to work on both very simple projects not a lot of brain power so lots of TV knitting beach knitting um, mindless very therapeutic knits and then when the yarn comes in fun knit um, just gonna go for it try and get the sleeves done everything done um, and decide what I'm gonna do on the neck and go from there but let's wait for it to come in the mail before we get ahead of ourselves and then my final acquisition is this mini skein set which I'm so excited about I saw it on Instagram and I literally went through the link went onto the website because I still just Instagram shopping and shopping like through things makes me a little nervous so I went through their website um, that's coming out there through their website and picked this up straight away this is um, Circus Tonic Handmade Australia um, all of their information will be in the description below and this is their birthstone collections November citrine um, mini skein set and yeah loving these warm tones um citrine is my birthstone i'm born in november i'm a scorpio baby um and i had to pick these up um yeah not only because they were the november ones but i wanted to get their june ones or the birthstone that is ruby i think that's june and if it's not whatever birth birth month is june i wanted to pick those up earlier in the year and didn't um but yeah these ones are so gorgeous um lots of different like when you hold gemstones in the sun and you like twirl them around and you get all those beautiful light ref reflections and refractions and all these juicy orange yellow pinky brown colors um yeah, and so this is my favorite base. This is the 75% merino, 25% nylon. Um, and these are 20 gram minis. So there's 87 yards, 80 meters in a 20 gram mini. Um, and I'm planning... I like to buy things with a plan. I also like to buy things with no plan. But this one I thought I could make the Friday Tea by Petite Knit. Um... And then do the straps all different colors or like a, a variation, like a six repeat. I don't know how many straps there is in the Friday tea, but I'm sure I could work it out. Um, okay, so my battery needed a charge, um, but we're back. I can't remember what I was talking about, but um, yeah, this birth collections, birthstone collections, Jubilee sock by Circus Tonic Handmade. Excuse me again. In November Citrine, super excited about this, um, thinking of casting on the Friday Tea by Petite Knit and doing this in combination with like an undyed merino nylon um, sock yarn. Yeah, so very, very happy with this. Um, great impulse ch purchase. And I think what I'll do is I'll leave this cast on for when I do the... Um, Twist and Turns MCAL as like my simple project because um, it's broken rib. Easy and do some socks on the side as well. In terms of any updates on the MCAL, what I've decided I'm going to do is um, I was really struggling finding yarns that fit the brief that match the, um, oh gosh, match this 
or coordinate with this as the ColourPop. I feel like it's too variegated and too speckled that you can't get a really nice contrast, especially for colours that I feel like I would wear. Like I'm not going to do bright orange as one of the main colours. I'm just not going to do that. And so I will add myself to kind of deviate from my plans. Even though I had saved this, I can make a beautiful pair of socks or a one skein shawl. Um, there are plenty of patterns on Ravelry that I could use. Yeah, and not put too much pressure on myself to use that, even though I saved it for that. Um, that was kind of in the anticipation it was going to be like a five or six colour shawl and then I'd be able to take lots of different colours out, um, but this year it's not the case. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to get. I know I want to get the DIY MCAL, the bundle with the project bag from Stephen and Penelope. Just umming and ahhing about the shipping. The shipping to Australia costs more than the actual, the kit, and so... I'm going to decide what yarn I'm going to buy first and how expensive that is and whether I can justify purchasing that on top of the yarn. So if I get like a $150 kit, I could probably say, hey, yeah, I'm going to buy that. But if I get more expensive yarn or a different hand dyed one, that's a bit more on the price, yeah, upwards or up to the $200 mark, I probably won't um, go ahead and purchase the DIY kit. Um, with the project bag and the stitch markers and the, not the stitch markers, the needle gauge and the MCAL tag, which I think I would really enjoy, but also I don't really like tags that much on my clothing, and at the end of the day, if I don't buy it, I know that I did it with the MCAL. Um, yeah, so that's kind of like my plans for right now, and I don't think I had... Anything else to... Whoa, I've got this on in the background. Sorry, my computer is so messy. Um, the desktop is so messy. Um, anyway, thank you for sitting down and having a chat with me about my finished objects, my whips, and my acquisitions, as well as some little updates. Um, I hope this has been a great soundtrack to some knitting or anything else that you like to do. Um, with these long format videos. Yeah, if you would like to like this video um, and that helps other people see the video, that would be great. Um, and if you enjoyed this content and want to go see more, please click the subscribe button and go look at my channel and you can see my previous episode from two weeks ago. Yeah, and then also if you want any more updates, um, you can check out my Instagram. Um, my knitting one is at Floody Fiber, and then my, like, general crafting, um, ceramics, other little bits and bobs, um, uni projects and stuff, that will be at The Girly Dinosaur. Yeah, and just thank you so much for spending time, some time with me, I really appreciate it. Yeah, I want you to feel like this is sitting down and having a chat with a friend about your knitting, um, and, yeah, I think this is a really great way to do that. And until the next podcast, I'll see you soon. Bye.